Well, it's certainly neck and neck as America decides through the night coverage now of the US presidential election results. In less than half an hour, the first polls close in one of the most unpredictable presidential elections in recent history. Can President Obama win a second term, or has Governor Romney done enough to become the 45th president of the United States? You'll find out here on America Decides 2012. Good evening. The stakes couldn't be higher. The battle couldn't be closer. Tonight, we should find out who will be the President of the United States. From coast to coast, more than 230 million Americans are entitled to vote in an election that looks set to leave us guessing right until the very end. Just a few weeks ago, President Obama seemed to have an unassailable lead. Then Mitt Romney stormed ahead. But who's done enough tonight? Well, this is what they're fighting for. 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, better known to you and me, as the White House. Tonight, no one can say with certainty which candidate will win the race to get there. But you'll find out here first. So, stay with me and my guests for what is set to be a riveting election night. With our broadcast partners, NBC, we'll bring you the results in the key battleground states that'll decide this race. And our reporting teams will have the latest reaction and analysis. Julie Etchingham is in the world-famous Rockefeller Plaza in New York, where they'll be updating a map of the United States as each state is called, and they'll be keeping a tally of votes for each candidate. Our correspondents are at the Republican and Democrat campaign headquarters. Bill Neely is with the Romney camp in Boston. Robert Moore is in Chicago with President Obama's supporters. Mark Austin is in Washington, D.C., talking to leading U.S. commentators about the big election issues. Geraint Vincent's in the pivotal swing state of Ohio, hearing from voters who could decide who wins. And here in London, I'll be joined throughout the night by uh, Romilly Weeks, who's there monitoring all that's going on on the internet. Never has a campaign been fought so much by Facebook and Twitter and the rest of it. And here in the studio, I'll have top analysts and commentators keeping you up to date with who is winning which state and why. So later tonight, we'll also be going live to the Middle East and to China. Our correspondents will be asking how the new United States president deals with challenges in Iran, in Syria, and how he'll shape policy toward a growing and confident China. Our economics editor, Richard Edgar, is following how the markets react, and he'll explain how the fate of the American economy matters to us here at home. And for some, it is party night, whoever wins. Our correspondent, Emma Murphy, has a ticket for Britain's biggest election night bash at the US Embassy in London. Well, here at the Rockefeller Plaza, they're getting ready to paint in the results on NBC's election night ice rink. We'll see which American states turn red or blue and what that means for the overall race. Well, Mitt Romney has been campaigning right until the very end. He spent election day on the road. This is him in Ohio battling for what could be some crucial votes in that crucial swing state. Romney cast his own vote in Massachusetts. Well, Barack Obama voted last month one of an estimated 35 million early voters. He stayed close to home in Chicago today, helping workers in one of his campaign offices and making a few last-minute phone calls to voters in those crucial swing states and giving them a bit of a surprise, no doubt. Well, voting is still going on, but polls are due to close shortly in six states, including the battleground state of Virginia. There were huge queues there today, and officials say the indications are of a very high turnout. The pre-election polls couldn't separate the two candidates in that state. And is that the shape of things to come tonight? This is the result in the tiny town of Dixville Notch in New Hampshire, which is traditionally the first to declare. For the first time in history, the two candidates were tied with five votes each. 
And if you want to get an idea of what this election means to many people, a story from one polling station in Detroit where an elderly man had to be given CPR after his heart stopped. His first question after he was revived was, did I vote? Well, I'll be keeping you up to date with all the news of the night and getting reaction from the crowd, which is building here around Rockefeller Plaza as the big results unfold. Well, this election will indeed turn on a handful of key swing states. Julie mentioned Virginia there. 